Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Mia Tiffany and today we are going to be watching the hysterically whimsical film, Harvey. <laughs> So, Harvey was directed by Henry Coster and released in 1950 with performances by Cecil Calloway, Josephine Hull, and the very talented, very handsome Jimmy Stewart. So I'm really excited to watch this. <laughs> All right, guys, so a quick synopsis of the film, according to IMDb, <laughs> um, it says, due to his insistence that he has an invisible six foot tall rabbit as a best friend, a whimsical middle-aged man is thought by his family to be insane but he might be wiser than anyone knows. Very interesting. The first thing that pops out um, in that quick synopsis is the fact that he has a six foot tall rabbit as a friend. <laughs> it's a little, uh, little scary. One of the things that I found really interesting about this film was that it actually was originally a Broadway play that was released in 1945. And it actually also won a Pulitzer Prize for drama. This playwright was Mary Chase, I believe. And in 1948, they actually asked Jimmy Stewart to play the role of Elwood P. Dowd for I think like two, like a seven week run. And the house was packed. Like people would come and just watch him play this character because as we know, he's just such a wonderful performer. And so they eventually asked him to come back and reprise his role of Elwood P. Dowd in the movie. Both Josephine Hull and Jimmy Stewart went on, well, Jimmy Stewart, was nominated for Best Actor at the Academy Awards of that year, and then Josephine Hall actually won the award for Best Supporting Actress of that year at the Academy Awards. So this movie was really, you know, taken well by the audiences, really loved by people, and it also deals with a lot of like, it's like, it's it's a comedy. I, I know that from the, my research, it's a comedy film, but it deals with a lot of like dark themes within the movie. So I'm excited to kind of see how they work that into the film. But before we even get started, I noticed that some of you are not subscribed to the channel, but that's totally fine, no worries. I'm gonna give you a chance to do that right now because y'all know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. Okay, everybody, it is time. Get comfy, get cozy, get your snacks and your drinks, and let us get in to Harvey. After you. Ooh. <laughs> He's talking to nothing. <laughs> You know what I noticed? They have Jimmy like not centered in the camera, like he's off center so that you know as the audience that there's some, there's supposed to be someone there. Um, so it feels like there actually is a person there because the way that the camera is angled, like he's not the center, he's like off center. Um, and I love that they did that and I noticed that, but at the same time it kind of scares me because I'm like, who is he talking to? It's really nerve wracking. That is a nice doing? house. Leaving. People get run over by trucks every day. Why can't something like that happen to Uncle Elwood? That's mean. Oh, Myrtle, don't be didactic. Didactic. It's not Josephine Hall is an American stage actress, but I, f I feel like I'm, I'm sensing like a British accent. Uh, but, but then could it be the transatlantic accent? I still can't distinguish, like as I'm watching these. Um, so if anyone has seen this film and knows if she's doing like a transatlantic accent or if that's just like how they talked in the 50s, I don't know. I re I'm really interested because it sounds very peculiar. Something sweet about every young girl. And a man takes that sweetness and look what he does with it. Oh, show some poise, dear. I want you to charm Mrs. Chauvin. Like even just in her wardrobe, you can already tell that this is very different from like the 30s or 40s like it, it feels like the 1950s which is weird because you know it's it's in black and white and so i don't know sometimes you kind of lose the the decades but her dress is so reminiscent of that of that decade we must be more careful Oh, I love Jimmy Stewart so much. You guys, all of you who have been recommending Jimmy Stewart films, you've gotten me into Jimmy Stewart. Like, I cannot stop watching his films. I love him so much. He's such, such a good actor. And he's so handsome. Like, I can't. I'm totally fangirling. <laughs> oh, 
Peter Louise Simmons, I thought you were dead. Oh, no. No, I'm very much alive, thank you. And this is, is that my something? I don't think that's something you say to someone. My dear, I mean, she's waving at you. Is, is that Mrs. Frank Cummings? Doesn't she look ghastly? I thought she was dead. What is up with her and saying she thinks that people are dead? <laughs> what is that about? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Elwood. Beat Harvey. Harvey, you've heard me speak about Elwood. <laughs> She's like, no. one of my oldest and <laughs> She's the one. <laughs> Look at her face. She's, She's like, <laughs> okay. Well, I, I think yeah, I would be running along, along too. I'd be like, all right, oh, oh, thanks for the tea. Oh, no, I'm going to go now. <laughs> Good night. Good night. But he seems to not, like, care. He's like, yeah, I have a best friend who is a six-foot-tall rabbit. They got the electronic gate and everything, like, okay. Oh, yeah, isn't, isn't this wonderful, Vita? Okay, buddy. Oh, d <laughs> dang, he yanked him in there. Wow, just like what's up, Bree? Every once in a while, I see this big white rabbit myself. He is oh, honey, you should not have told the psychologist to that, especially in the 1950s, as a woman. There, no <gasps> one. You let me go. I'm a respectable woman. That's is he taking her in to like commit her? Oh my gosh! Why are they committing her? She's. You'll have to sign these commitment papers for her. But I didn't know the woman needed the treatment. She said it was her brother. Of course she did. That's the oldest dodge in the world. Always used by a cunning type of psychopath. She knew her brother was about to... You know, mm, you know, <laughs> I don't want to get controversial, but I feel like that uh, some of the things in this movie would definitely not hold up in this day and age. Um, Harvey. Yes, I believe she called him Harvey. Well, Harvey's his name. And now, Doctor, before we go any further, I must insist that you and Miss Kelly allow me to introduce you to... Uh, let me... Now, here's the question. Does does he know that other people can't see the rabbit? You now, you, you two have been so pleasant. Why don't we just uh, keep on going with it? I'd like to invite you to come downtown with me and we'll go to a charming little place called Charlie's and we'll have a drink. Like, he's so, like, doesn't even... There's no, like, hesitancy. Or, you know when you meet someone for the first time and you're a little... You don't really... You want to feel them out. You're like, I don't know if I'm, I could vibe with this person. He doesn't have that. And I love that. I love how it's just like, okay, let's just get to know each other like that. It's it's nice. Harvey knows this town like a book. But how will I recognize your friend? Oh, you can't miss him, Mrs. Chumley. He's a puka. <laughs> He's a puka? A puka. A, a puka. Do you guys know what a puka is? A puka. Would, would, uh, would you care to come over to my house for dinner tomorrow night? I'm having a few friends in, just informally. Why, well, I, I certainly would. That's very nice of you, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Dowd. Let me, uh, let me give you one of my cards. I love in his character, too, that there's so much consistency. There's consistency kept in his, in his dialogue, in his manner, in his character as a whole. Like, he's a very consistent character. There's no deviation, which I really, I applaud Mary Chase for the way that she wrote this character. It's almost hard to to see him as like someone who doesn't have it all together, you know? Now, mind you, I don't know how he's not freaked out by a freaking six foot tall puka. Nonetheless, we as the audience can relate with him. Mother! <gasps> Vita Louise! Oh, she made it out of the sanatorium. What's wrong, girl? Oh, the minute their backs were turned, I ran like a frightened rabbit. I, oh, <laughs> frightened I didn't mean rabbit. to say I that. I don't know what- I would have sued. I would have definitely sued. How are you gonna forcibly commit me? Like, do you know who I am? Just kidding. I'm- I'm nobody. <laughs> Close off you and set you down in a tub of water. Ah, there he is! There How are you gonna come into my house? Today? This man literally walked into- into their house. You ain't gonna, like, knock on the door, ring the doorbell. You just gonna walk into my house? I don't think so. Well, really, I don't know. I think. Well, if you do, I'll be there. You will? If you don't see me right away, though, stick around for a little while. I'll show up. Is he well, hitting down. on yeah, her? Yeah, I got no time, kid. Really? I gotta find that uncle <laughs> okay, you know what? Disclaimer. We already know that this is a 1950s, and this is a very, very, very different culture 
than what we're living in right now. So I just need a... How about an egg and onion? I'd love to make you an egg and onion. The eggs and onions are waiting for you in the kitchen. Suppose we go in the kitchen, Mr. Wilson. You can relax and be yourself in there. Do you like your work, Mr. Wilson? Oh, I... like he comes into their house uninvited, didn't ring the doorbell. I didn't invite you into my house. He comes in, first of all, calls her uncle crazy and her mom crazy, and then proceeds to call her crazy, then hits on her in her house without asking. Then she gets all googly-eyed at him and wants to make him a sandwich? You can leave. Bye bye <laughs> Oh, fine. Thank you. Goodbye. I love his character. The way that, again, the way that Mary Chase wrote him is... Is such a relatable character. <gasps> oh no. Mm -mm. Could you imagine? <laughs> Could you imagine walking in and, you know, just, you know, putting things around, looking for, you're looking for something in the room. And you're just looking and all of a sudden you look up and you see a giant bunny sat next to your brother. Like, look at the way his eyes are looking at me. Oh my gosh. I feel like he's peering into my soul. Not listening to my radio. Where did he even Dr. get that Chumley. picture? I just told him. Oh, 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 I wonder what it would have felt like to act like against him or aside from him, like being an actor acting with him in a film. That must have been an honor. That must have been the equivalent of like acting with, I don't know, like Leonardo DiCaprio or like Robert De Niro or like Viola Davis or Meryl Streep. Like that would have been an honor. I would have been honored to act aside him. We've entered as strangers. Soon we have friends and they come over and they, they sit with us. They tell about their loves and their hates, all very large, because nobody ever brings anything small into a bar. They really chose the right one. Like Jimmy Stewart, like he just knows, he just knows, he's just such a good actor. And like in the past two movies that I've seen him, he has played three distinct characters. Like, you know, some actors that you watch and you're like oh they're kind of playing the same character over and over no not with jimmy like he is so like his characters are so distinct but at the same time there's an aspect of his characters you see him coming through like you see his personality coming through his characters and i just think that they just chose the right one ever know anybody by that name here we go. He's psychoanalyzing no. him again. No, not oh my one, God. doctor. You're one of my cars. Never mind the yeah, car. Yes. Hey, what don't manhandle I him. So I really feel like this, this film explores the idea of, you know, normal, but there's no real definition for normal. And I feel like they're all trying to put him in this this box of like, oh, you're not like us, so you're crazy. But no, it's just, it really... It does a fan, this film does a fantastic job of exploring what normal means to different people. Ooh, he unlocked the door! Ooh. Did I tell you he could stop clocks? To what purpose? So Harvey has well, power. Yeah. So now he, well, obviously now we know that the doctor can see Harvey, but now he's starting to believe. I know where I'd go. Where? I'd go to Akron. Akron? Oh, yeah. Green, cool, beautiful. Uh, that's my favorite tree. I feel like there's something to say about the fact that he's sitting in, like, the patient's chair. At this point in the, f in the story, Dr. Chumley now has seen Harvey and now knows of Harvey's existence. And it's almost like he's gone from the doctor that's trying to prescribe and ail the... So quote unquote craziness um and now he's becoming the patient and he's realizing that there's a different perspective to this it's not what you might think or what you might categorize as you know abnormal it's like there's a different perspective and i think the fact that they have him sat 
in the the patient's chair speaks a lot to that realization. There are things, things that I've never told to anyone, things that are locked deep in here. They have Elwood sitting in the chair as if he's now the doctor and the doctor is now the patient. In, in terms of storytelling, it's just an interesting um, visual. Now we see the roles reversed. The doctor has become the patient, the patient, the doctor. And I applaud Henry Coster for, for setting it like this. Papers drawn up. She has your power of attorney and the key to your safety box. And she brought you here. My sister did all that in one afternoon. That Vita certainly is a whirlwind, isn't she? Like he's not even phased at the fact that the doctor literally just told him that he, his sister was trying to have him committed. If, if it were me and my sister was trying to have me committed, I would be pretty hurt. Well, in my opinion, Elwood P. Dowd is suffering from a third degree hallucination. And I recommend formula number 977. You know when a formula is called a number that it is just not the formula you're using, boss. Like, that's some, like, that's some scary stuff. There's some scary stuff in that formula for sure. Probably not uh, safe for human consumption. <laughs> Miss Kelly, you know, when you wear my flower, you make it beautiful. A diviner grace has never brightened this enchanting face. Right. He's so sweet. He's sweet. But he's not hitting on her. You see the difference? He's just genuinely being sweet, complimenting her, being kind. The difference. I just wanted to point that out. Mr. Dowd, I have a formula, 977. Do It'll not take for formula 977. That sounds like that could kill you. Yes, it's a serum. <laughs> oh, Vita, do you want me to take that? Oh, Elwood, I'm only thinking of you. Whenever someone is saying, I'm only thinking of you, they are never thinking of you. They are thinking of themselves. Do not ever take anyone's word for it when they say that they're only thinking of you. They're not. <laughs> He's such a selfless character. Vita, are you sure? Again, kind of like yes. in It's a Wonderful Life. Huh. Vita, you, you tell Dr. Chalmers to say goodbye to the old fella for me, will you? Ugh. Why did that break my heart a little bit? No, I don't want you to Dr. say bye Sanderson, to her. I mean, he might be terrifying to look at, but, you know, he's not mean. He's benevolent. No, no, I do it. Kindness. They are trying to kill kindness no, with Formula 977. Don't take Formula 977, bro. It's like every single person that he comes into contact with, he's like the nicest guy, never rude, always inviting him to drinks or to dinner. Like, he's just such a good guy. Why would you ever want to change that? Who cares if he sees a six foot tall bunny? After this, he'll be a perfectly normal human being. And you know what stinkers they are. Glad I met you. No, oh, you don't want him to be a normal person. Oh, no. You want him to be no. beautiful as he is. No, why would you ever want to change someone as beautiful as him? Oh my goodness. Uh, no, Charles be fine. Uh, just fine. That's so sweet. Now don't, the bunny doesn't seem so scared. Away. Let him stay with me. Well, doctor, you see how he's he off center right there? Right like, that is so, so cool. Cool. I applaud Henry Coster for doing that because it feels like there's somebody that's supposed to be there for us as the audience but he's not there, obviously. But I just, um, I like that they, they did that. They framed it that way. No, I, I, I don't mind. And the camera becomes the, you know, perspective. God, I love camera. I love cinematography so much. You can do so much Have with it. Have you ever been to Akron? He came back to him, which is really sweet. What a great way to end the movie. Yeah, that was a super cute movie. Um, I definitely feel like this movie relied heavily on on the acting um again because they didn't have obviously like the cg that we have now and there's not like a person there like he like jimmy is literally reacting to nothing and i think that he does that so well <laughs> um but yeah that was a really good movie i really enjoyed it i think the only thing was just some of the themes were a little old outdated and old-fashioned but i think the way that they dealt with the dark concepts it wasn't like a dark comedy it was like a genuine comedy that just had some really dark themes that it was playing around with, you know? Um, but I think it was handled beautifully. I think Mary Chase did a great job writing it. I love the way that she wrote Harvey's character. 
Um, he was very relatable, uh, a very, a person that you like, you don't want to believe that he's out of it, you know, like he has everything together. He just sees the world differently than everyone else. And that's not, that's not a bad thing. You know, everyone has their own perspective in life. And I think that this film really captured that beautifully. I think I'm going to go ahead and give that one an eight of 10. I really liked it. It was really wholesome really sweet. Jimmy is a phenomenal actor. He did such a great job in this role. They definitely chose the right character or the right actor for the job. And yeah, everything was pretty, everything really came together. All right, everybody, that does it for this video. If you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. So I want to get y'all ready for what's about to go down next week. I think I'm going to start this thing at the end of my videos where I kind of tell you what movie we're watching next week because I want y'all to like watch it and then come back and watch the reaction and know kind of what's going on so you're not lost. <laughs> but specifically next week, we are going to be watching one of, if not the biggest classic film of all time. <laughs> I'm talking about Gone with the Wind. So. I want everyone to please watch it. I provided some links down in the description box below of places where you can find it for free. But I want everyone to watch it. I want everyone to really just sit with it and then come back, watch the reaction, and, we're, and then we're just going to discuss. And then one other thing, it's actually going to be in two parts. So next week we'll watch part one, and then in a couple weeks we'll watch part two. So I said watch. <laughs> In a couple weeks, we'll watch part two. I'm so excited to watch this film. I have seen it before, but I really like want to watch it as an adult and just see, you know, what I missed as a child. So I'm really excited for that. But until then, please stay safe and healthy. Thank you so much for watching my video. As always, if you have any comments or if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment box below. Thank you so much, everyone, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye, everybody.